Amen. Thank you, Reinhardt. Um, welcome to the first ever Restore live stream. You're part of an historic event. I want to give a big shout out to you if you're watching today in your pyjamas. First time in church in pyjamas. Fantastic. Um, I want to give a big shout out to you if you're part of the regular Restore congregation and you're joining us today um, in the midst of this current crisis. I want to give a big shout out to you if you're tuning in from somewhere else in the UK. And I gather we've got people around the world also tuning in today. It's great to have you join us in these times together. As I say, um, we're facing unprecedented times as a nation and uh, as we face those times we want to stay united and we want to stay connected as God's people as church together and this is one of the ways that hopefully we will be able to stay connected uh, during these weeks. Uh, please do go onto the chat stream right now. Uh, a really good thing to post is that's a fantastic point Ian. Um, that will go down really really well and will score really highly. If you want prayer at any point then just click and we've got people that will live prayer with you this morning. As Reinhardt said, we want to do community and family and we want to care for one another really, really well in these times. As I've been praying and kind of asking God for a word for today, uh, one of the chapters of the Bible that's really, really been on my heart is Joshua chapter 1, maybe not surprisingly if you know me at all. Um, but in Joshua chapter 1, the nation of Israel was facing a really significant challenge. And the challenge was their great leader, Moses, after 40 years, had died. And that left a vacuum in the heart of the nation. And it left a, a great sense of fear and vulnerability in the nation. And all the eyes of the nation were on one man, which was Joshua, uh, Moses' successor. And uh, Joshua had his internal fears as well. And I don't know about you, but it feels at the moment like there is a lot of fear in our nation. And also for many of us, we battle our own insecurities and our own fears and vulnerabilities at this time. But when you get to Joshua chapter 1, God speaks to Joshua and he speaks really clearly and really emphatically. And he speaks three times and says the very same thing. He says, be strong and courageous. And I just felt like uh, God was wanting to speak to us today and say, be strong and courageous and root yourself in me. Because the reality is, Jesus never changes. God never changes. And God is as much uh, uh, in control and as powerful today as he was two weeks ago or six months ago or 10 years ago or five years into the future. God is not wobbled by the current crisis and actually if we put ourselves if we root ourselves in him we can draw on his strength and we can draw on his courage and then we can be an encouragement to those people that are around us and so I, I, I just felt like Joshua chapter 1 and that verse about being strong and courageous was really significant for us and also if you unpack Joshua chapter 1 uh, uh, then you find that there's two ways that uh, God speaks to Joshua and says um, how he can find his strength and his courage. One of those ways is by being really careful what he focuses on and in particular what he listens to. And so Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God speaks to Joshua and he says, meditate on my word, root yourself in my word. And Israel's problem up to this point was they uh, spoke the wrong stuff. And they spoke out fear and they spoke out grumbling. And although we need to be tuned into the media to understand what's happening at the moment and to know the latest restrictions on us, at the same time, once we've heard that, we need to tune out of the voices of the nation that would bring fear. We need to tune out of some of the media stuff and we need to tune in to what God is saying because God's word brings hope and God's word brings strength. So I just want to encourage you, be careful what you listen to in these days and make sure there's lots of space to tune into podcasts and to listen to God's word. The second thing that God speaks in Joshua chapter 1 is he says, I will be with you. And to find moments during this current crisis where we can put ourselves intentionally into the presence of God is the way that we will find strength and hope and courage. One of the reasons why we wanted to live stream worship this morning is because for me, worship is the easiest way to connect my spirit to God's spirit. And when I don't know what else to do, um, or in every season of life, what I've learned is if I root myself in God and if I worship, there I find his peace and his presence and his hope. 
And so the sense I had was God was just wanting to speak uh, really gently to us, but really strongly to us today and say, be strong and courageous, root yourself in me, listen to my word and practice my presence. And you know what? If we do that, God will bring us through this and he will bring us through it with a sense of peace and hope. And you know what? We can grow stronger in God through these days. Um, I was reading uh, this week that the Chinese word for disaster, I don't know whether this is actually true or not. If you Google it, there's different variants on it, but it's a great idea. Um, The Chinese character for uh, disaster is a combination of two symbols. And one of those symbols means uh, danger, but the other one means opportunity. And I really like that because in any crisis, there is the possibility of an opportunity for God to do something new. At the end of Genesis, at the end of the life of Joseph, there's a a verse in the Bible and it says, what the enemy purposed for uh, evil, God has used for good. And out of this current crisis, if we put ourselves into Jesus, do you know Jesus can bring some amazing, surprisingly good things out of it? One of those, we're live streaming. I would have loved to have live streamed as a church for years and years and years, but for whatever reason, we never got there. Today we are, so our reach can go wider than ever before. You know, in my heart, I don't want us as a church to be Sunday focused. I I believe that gatherings are really, really important, and they're a significant part of what it is to be a community of faith, but I don't want a church that's all about Sundays. When you read through the book of Acts, people created community and went house to house. They created community in home. Uh, They worshipped in homes. They broke bread together in homes. Wouldn't it be amazing if God used this time to effect a revolution in us and we created a new sense of community in our local neighbourhoods and in our homes and in our families. And then when we gathered, we were able to celebrate all that God has done. So one of the things I'd be saying to you is, what is the opportunity that you have out of these months. There's probably, there may never be another time that you have the privilege of having your kids at home with you, maybe for a couple of months. Now, I know for some people that doesn't instantly make you feel like that's a privilege, Um, but actually that can be an amazing thing. What if you chose not so much to focus on homeschooling? What if you chose to make incredible family memories? What if you ordered some books, um, some games from Amazon? What if you thought what would be amazing for us to watch together as a family? And what if you sorted out a timetable where you could just celebrate and invest in relationship with your kids and together in family? This could be an incredible time of investing and uh, making great memories together. Also, I know for many people, 2019 was a year of real challenge and it was a year of stretching. For many of us, over these coming weeks, we're going to get back the gift of time. We no longer have to commute. We're not allowed out to do some of the shopping that we might do otherwise. What if we said, this is like a mini sabbatical? And actually, I'm going to use this time to do some of the things I've longed to do or dreamt of doing, and yet I've never quite had the opportunity to do it. What if you dusted out that, uh, that wish list of books that I've wanted to read? hobbies that I've wanted to take up? Uh, What if we use this time to refresh ourselves as life moves at a slightly slower pace? Do you know what? We might come out of these months stronger than ever before and hopefully more uh, deeply rooted in Jesus, more healthy than ever before as well. I also want to say at the end, at the bottom of the page, there's a contact us form. And if you need help in any shape or form over this period, if you fill in that form, we will help you. We've got people on hand who would love to help you with your homeschooling, if that is a pressure for you. We can make recommendations to you of things to watch and resources that can help you, or we can regularly be praying for you. So let's connect together, even if it's in virtual ways, so we can resource one another and continue to be a faith community. Now, last week, we started a new series that's called Sent, and it's all about the fact that we worship a God who loved us enough to send his son to be with us. And we were just uh, thinking about the fact that the heart of God is to reach all people everywhere. And so Jesus, he was sent from heaven to earth, for God so loved the world that he gave, or he sent, 
his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Probably the most famous verse in the whole of the Bible. But it talks about God sending his Son on a mission, and a mission to reach us. And last week we were investigating and thinking about the fact that Jesus wants us all to be sent into our communities, into our places of work, into wherever we are, so we can carry and release God's presence. If ever there was a time that we as God's people need to not be shaken, but also know that God's hand is on us for such a time as this, to be sent to our next door neighbours, to be sent into our communities, now is the time. And what we're thinking about today is how we're sent. And uh, when we think about how we're sent, we're thinking about the whole fact that what separates God's people from the the Sainsbury's delivery man um, is that we are sent in love. That's no disrespect to a Sainsbury's delivery man, and maybe some of them do come to your doorstep in love. But what distinguishes us from every other person is we carry the love of God. And the reason we care and the reason we reach out to other people is because God's love is in our hearts. Now, if you read through the Bible, you find there's four things that the Bible says that God is. Uh, In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, it says that God is light. In fact, the verse says, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. I think that's really interesting to remember at the moment because when you look at the creation story that starts off with God saying, let there be light, when you follow through the seven days of creation, what you find is that everything that God creates is good. This current virus is not from God. Jesus says the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and life in all its fullness. And that's why when darkness comes, we need to run into the light of God. We need to run into the presence of God. The Bible also says that God is spirit. In John chapter 4, verse 24, it says God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. And I'm really grateful that God is spirit because God's spirit is not confined by proximity or location. And so God's spirit can be with me right here and God's spirit can be with you wherever you are right now. God's not restricted by just uh, being in one hall or one place. God can be everywhere at the same time because he can reach us and he works by his spirit and through his spirit, which is why over these days we want to continue to practice the presence of God and welcome the work of his spirit into our lives. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, it says, God is a consuming fire, for our God is a consuming fire. Do you know, walking through days like this is like walking through uh, times of testing and times of fire. And fire has the ability to purify us. Maybe fear is an ongoing issue in your life. Well, your fear is probably ramped up at the moment. What if God wanted to use these weeks and days to deal with the issue of fear in your life and to break it and break you free. That's part of what can happen when we worship a God who has the power to burn some of these things out of us and make us more like him. But the fourth thing that it says in the Bible that God is, is it says God is love. And all the other references to what God is, there's one reference. When we get to God is love, there's two references because it's the very essence of who God is. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. And again in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, God is love, and whoever abides or rests or dwells in love abides in God, and God abides or dwells or rests in him. In these days, we want to rest in God's love, And then we want to be people who can carry God's love to others. And in Luke's gospel, Jesus tells two stories about being sent. And both of those stories, um, a pivotal part of them is being sent in love, but being sent out into our local community. And I think the two stories are probably more relevant for us today than ever before. They're both very well-known stories. Um, One of them is in Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through to 37, and it's the story of the Good Samaritan. Now, why is that relevant to us? 
Well, because the preface to the story is a man comes to Jesus and he says, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, you need to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. And then he goes on and he says, you need to love your neighbour as yourself. And the guy says to Jesus, well, who is my neighbour? And then Jesus tells this story and he tells it about a man who gets beaten up and robbed and left for dead on the side of the road. Now, two people come uh, and see this guy, but they just walk on by. They were a Levite and a priest, so they were people who actually should have known better. But the reality was that life was too busy and their focus was elsewhere. So they missed the opportunity to carry the heart of God. And it was the Samaritan, uh, one of the enemies of the Jews, so one of the people that shouldn't have had anything to do with them. It was him that stopped and helped. I wonder how many of us have neighbours today that need us to cross over the road and talk to them and offer them help and love them. The second story is in Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through to 32. And it's the story of the prodigal son. And the thing with this story is it's a story about family. And it's a story about a scattered family. Because a man has two sons and one son stays at home, so he stays in the local proximity. The other son, though, he wanders on a journey. And actually, he gets separated from his family. And he ends up isolated, and he ends up in a place of need. But when he finally, it says uh, in verse 15, he came to his senses. When he finally comes back, then his dad runs to him and embraces him and gives him a welcome home. I wonder how many of us have got family members that we need to be close to in this time. I wonder how many of us have got family members that we need to be reaching out and sending God's love to in this time. What if we stripped back, scaled back our other activity and we simply ask God, God, today, who is my neighbour that I need to be including and loving? God, who is my family? And it might be a physical family, it might be a spiritual family. God, who is my family that I can be sent to in love and that I can reach out to? And these two stories are really interesting because um, not only are they really good stories, but there's a number of parallels between the two stories. And I just want to pick up on a couple of those parallels because I think they're important to us uh, at this moment in our time. Firstly, both of them contain the same central verse at the heart of the story. And they both say, when he saw him, he felt compassion. When he saw him, he felt compassion. The first one, the Good Samaritan, when he sees someone in need, his heart is stirred. And that's what makes him cross over the road. The second one with the father, when he sees his son, although in many ways the father could have been really bitter and really angry and really resentful, when he sees him, his heart is stirred with compassion. If we're going to be the people that are available for God to use in these days, we need first to recenter our heart in God's love and we need to ask God to restore to us a heart of compassion. If you read through the Bible, there's a number of times where it talks about Jesus being moved by compassion. And every time he's moved by compassion, he does something really quite extraordinary. In Mark chapter 1, there's a leper. And as you know, the lepers were the outcasts. Nobody would go near them. And yet when Jesus sees this particular leper, it says he's moved with compassion and he reaches out and touches him. And in that touch, there's incredible healing as the power of isolation is broken. And somebody says, I care and I see that need. In Luke chapter 7, there's the story of a a widow. And uh, we know she's a widow. She's already lost her husband. Um, She then has the grief of losing her son. And Jesus turns up in a city, the city of Nain, into the middle of a funeral. And Jesus is so moved by her need He, again, does something that he shouldn't have done in the culture of the day. He reaches out and touches the coffin, and a son comes back to life. Maybe in these days, we're going to be journeying alongside people who encounter grief like never before, and they need someone that's willing to reach out and touch them and bring the love of God and the presence of God into them. Another story when Jesus um, 
is moved by compassion is when he feeds the 5,000. What if today we got together our lunch and prayed that God would multiply it and then gave some of it away to our community? I believe God is still able to do those kind of miracles. And I think when we have a heart of compassion and we present ourselves to God, it's then that we will see those kind of miracles. Another um, parallel between these two stories is both of them carry seven practical steps that the person who's moved with compassion takes to meet the need. So in the story of the Good Samaritan, the seven steps are uh, the Samaritan comes to the man in need. He bandages his wounds. He puts him on his donkey. He takes him then to an inn. He nurses him. He pays the innkeeper to care for him. And then he promises to come back and make sure he's okay again. And in the story of the prodigal son, again, seven practical steps. It says the father runs to him. It says he embraces him. It says he gave him the best robe. It says he puts a ring on his hand and he puts sandals on his feet. He makes a feast and they have a party and they celebrate. The fact that both stories contain very practical steps, I think, is significant for us. And I think it's significant for us for this very reason. Real love will always produce action. Real love will always produce action. If we love our neighbours, if we love our family, now is the time to act. It says in uh, John chapter 15, Jesus talking to the disciples, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. Brothers, sisters, this is a time, I think for many of us, we need to be sacrificing and laying down our lives to serve others. I had the privilege of being in uh, Hong Kong at the start of this year and spending some time with Jackie Pullinger and the ministry there. Uh, one of my friends in Hong Kong uh, emailed me this week and uh, you know in the Far East, one of the uh, mechanisms they're using to protect themselves against this virus is the face masks. And uh, they got given in the last few weeks 150,000 face masks. And so rather than keep them as an organisation, they identified the most people in need in their local community and they went and gave away 150,000 face masks. And they gave them to cleaners, they gave them to domestic workers, and they gave them to addicts living on the streets. And they said that people literally broke down and wept because someone loved them enough to give them a free face mask. Over this last week, they've delivered over 500 food parcels to people, some of the most vulnerable in need, in their local community. I was talking to someone on Friday morning and they'd been to um, a local supermarket and they were queuing to uh, pay for their um, uh, trolley, which can be a, a long queue and a long time um, at, the current, uh, at this current moment. And she said she was standing in the queue and uh, waiting to pay and someone walked by with a chicken in her hand. And she said that when she'd gone uh, to do a shop, uh, the, where the chicken should have been, that section was totally empty. And it was a chicken that she knew her daughter ate and she was desperate to get. And so she said to this woman, excuse me, have they just put some chickens out? And she said, this woman stopped and she said, yes, they have. But I tell you what, you have that one and I'll go and see if I can find another one. It's so easy to come under the spirit of the age which hoards it's so easy to act the same way as everyone else. What if we chose in these moments to be a generous people? What if we chose to respond in the opposite spirit? What if we chose to step out in faith and take a step to serve someone else? Because do you know what? I think God will look after us if we do that. In fact, we might encounter something fresh of the presence of God when we do that, because for me, that looks a bit more like a life that looks like Jesus. Got a great quote from Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa said, faith in action is love and love in action is service. By transforming that faith into living acts of love, we put ourselves in contact with God himself, with Jesus, our Lord. 
Let's be a community of people that puts our love into action to reach other people. Just want to say one more thing, and again, drawn from those two stories and those seven acts of service. What I want to say is that restoration is a journey. And sometimes I think we think, I can't solve the whole crisis. And you know what? You can't. You can pray, you can add your prayers, and our prayers do make a difference at this time and at this season. But we don't have to solve the whole situation. We can just take one step. And in both of those stories, I think it's significant that there's seven steps because the number seven in the Bible represents completeness. And so both of those stories carry a complete journey to complete healing. And in both of those stories, the same person does all the seven steps. My experience is often it's not the same person that does the same seven steps. All we need to do is say, God, what's my next step? I may not be able to change the overall situation, but I can change the right here, right now, because I can take this step. And I want to encourage you, let's make ourselves available for God to use in these moments. And let's say, God, what's my next step in serving my neighbour? What's my next step in serving my local community? What's my next step in being the hands and the feet of Jesus? I'm going to close in a moment, but I just want to remind you of a few key things that I felt that God was speaking to us for this morning. Number one, let's be strong and courageous. And let's be strong and courageous because we're rooted into Jesus and we're rooted into his strength and his courage. Let's be looking for the opportunities that God's going to open out amongst us. And let's be a people who know that we are sent in love. And let's take these moments to touch the heart of God once more and to ask God to share his heart with our heart. And let's be ready then to serve our neighbours, to serve our community. Let's be ready to take our next steps and put God's love into action. Would you join with me right now in praying? Um, If you want to close your eyes where you are, I think that just helps us to dial out the distractions and to focus on Jesus. Maybe you want to join with me and just put your hand on your heart. I'm just going to invite God's Spirit to come wherever we are right now, whatever nation, whatever room in our house, whatever community. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are everywhere. And Father, I pray that you will come right now with the power of your Spirit. And I pray for every heart that is watching this right now. I pray for every heart that is connected to us right now. I ask you, Holy Spirit, will you come with the power of the love of God? Father, we still every fear right now. We bind the power of fear in Jesus' name. And we thank you that perfect love casts out all fear and we release the perfect love of God. We release the presence of God right now. Lord, I pray that all of us might know your love coming near. But Lord, I pray as we know your love coming near, Lord, will you give us your heart? May we be a people that are moved by compassion. May we be a people that are ready and willing for you to use. May we be a people that more than ever before are ready and available to love our neighbours and love those in need in our local community. Father, will you take our hands, will you take our feet? And Lord, will you use us to be the bridge builders, those who reach out in your love to see many, many people encounter the unconditional love of God in these days. And Lord, will you show us, Lord, what our next step is, Lord? Will you show us where we can begin? Will you show us where we can start even today? Maybe there's someone, Lord, that we need to call. Maybe there's someone that we need to give something away to. Father, will you lead us by your Spirit to the honour and glory of Jesus. Amen.